we were in the UN this week when they voted. Uh, well, they voted, but then they had the signing ceremony, and like within an hour, 41 countries signed on, and by the end of the day, it was, I mean, it was just so exciting. Presidents of Brazil, you know, and the, you know, presidents, foreign ministers. So this is very exciting, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this workshop because we are right now in the belly of the beast in the time of the banning of the bomb, and the best thing we can do now, I think, is the divestment project. That, uh, that's something um, you know we can do in the nuclear weapon states, in the, uh, in the NATO state. They were a certain group that blocked it, and I think this is where, uh, this is where we can have an effect in those countries. We're just like we heard from Terry yesterday about how our boycott ended apartheid in South Africa. I mean, that's what we have to do. And South Africa has described the current nuclear situation as nuclear apartheid. They did it at the last NPT where, you know, the nuclear weapon states promised in 1970 to get rid of them. And here we are, 16,000 on the planet. Oh, so let me go on. But anyway, and the other thing I want to request if we have a minute, is to just make a circle so we can all look at each other. No? They're on wheels, these tables. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's getting ready. Yeah. We'll wait if we can't see um, so, hi everybody. I think I introduced myself yesterday. I'm Susie Snyder, and I work on this project, Don't Bang the Bomb. Um, and I'm based in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. <laughs> My coffee didn't hit the mouth yet today. Uh, and really excited to be here. I think there's some great opportunities. Uh, and I already heard um, from the introduction, I heard five different types of activities that we could coordinate on and work together on. And one thing that we actually need to talk about when we focus on how to overcome certain challenges. And that was just in 10 minutes. So we have, a, we have a bit of time, and I think that we're going to come out of this room with some really you know, powerful and, and fierce activity. And I like that. And fierce in a good way, not fierce in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, a note that we have to report back. Does anybody want to take notes and report back on what happened here? So we need a pair of rapporteurs. Thank you. And Alice, you're the other one. I am? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, right? Yes. Thanks, Barbara. So, uh, I, I, I'm Jonathan King. I'm a longtime professor at uh, MIT. Uh, now, though MIT was for years the leading uh, second visiting university Pentagon contract on only for conventional weapons. On nuclear weapons, MIT was the home of the Manhattan project scientists who decided the bomb was a mistake. The nuclear weapons freeze campaign was conceived right at MIT in the office of Philip Morris and Randy Forsberg was a postdoctoral fellow there. And we have a long tradition, a long and continuing tradition of uh, one of the few campuses in the United States where there's still a nuclear disarmament activity which has disappeared almost everything else. We have to reverse that. Um, I wasn't in my introduction yesterday, but uh, in those days, I lived in the part of Boston called Dorchester's economically depressed area. The nuclear weapons freeze campaign got nowhere, nowhere. So we picked up a campaign we had heard from in San Francisco called the Jobs with Peace campaign, and everything changed. But that was a lot of people's minds. We said, why aren't there jobs? We started putting the money there. We had a Books Not Bombs campaign. The Massachusetts Teachers Association picked it up. They picked 80,000 leaflets, sent it out. And, and I learned uh, about this different approach where you start with the people where they are. If they yeah. say that I'm about to be evicted and that's the world crisis, you agree. That is the world crisis mm -hmm. and how come it's, it's hitting on you. And that's why the, this economic focus, because the don't bank on the bomb, appeals to anybody who actually believes that making a living and you know, how the money moves is, is a key player. So I think it's a really key. Uh, way to open up certain things. For what, um, I was going to have this in my talk, but I think I'll put it in the introduction. Don't assume that other nuclear disarmament and peace activists are going to immediately unite with you, right? Because this campaign does not start by talking 
about the world getting blown up. So let's talk about who's making money off the threat of it. It's a little different approach. So not everybody comes to it that quickly. Cool. Um, so, so, yeah, so I, I want to just um, if it's okay, I want to maybe I was going to do a little video, but I think I'm going to skip the video. Um, and maybe just take a, a quick second just to run through the existing resources around this because um, it's kind of handy to know what there is out there. Um, and that maybe can kick us off into what we need um, to be able to do some stuff. Is that, is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to stand up because I'm a hyper energetic person and I like to stand up and I'll move this. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, um, what we have here. Mm -hmm. It's my very sloppy computer. <laughs> Forgive me. Oh, you can tell it's got my name on it. All the different things I look at. Um, and um, accidentally on YouTube. Don't mean to be on YouTube. I mean to be on. Um, so I put uh, underneath this, I'll put the screen up in a second. I put some lists already, a couple of, of resources because. What we, do, what we do here is we gather information, we make plans, we need to take all this stuff in and then go home um, and use it. So here's the, the Don't Pack Bomb website, uh, and it's got these different categories. And I just wanted to, to quickly tell you what it is. So we've got these, um, the list of the producers. These are companies that we have identified contracts with uh, that for nuclear weapon production. It is not an exhaustive list. So we don't have every single company that makes every single piece of every single bomb because you know what? Like BIC makes pens that get used in nuclear weapon laboratories. All right, mm -hmm. we don't include BIC in our list. We do stuff, um, companies that have contracts that, and we use a very kind of lofty language, um, <laughs> that um, components that contribute to the lethality of the weapon. And it sounds big in, you know, highfalutin language, and I know that, but it's stuff that without this, they would not be able to kill people with these bombs. All right. So we're pretty selective. Um, it's an intensive research process, and we go through and we work really hard and produce this massive report, and then we distill it into some quick and easy facts, some, some info about contracts, um, and stuff that people can use. Um, and if you want the really massive report, you can always get that too. We're very transparent about our stuff. Um, so that's the producers. And those are the companies. And currently, we have 27 companies on our on our list. Um, okay. So then, uh, then we've got who invests. Oh, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I was oh, yeah. Are we supposed to be seeing the? Producers? No, no. I'm just showing okay. you. This is just the main page. So you just click on it, and then it goes in, and it, it each one has profiles and. Show them some companies. Sure. This will yeah. you know, yeah. resonate in this U.S. Group. Sure. Okay, so this is a, you know, this is here, for example, a quick guide, who produces which arsenals? So in France, the, the French arsenal, the Indian arsenal, UK arsenal, um, US arsenal. One thing about the United States, you can find way more information here than anywhere else. And I, I really appreciate that because it is, it does make it easier to challenge it. Um, and that's yeah, something, no. yeah. It's no, but it, I mean, you can see. So these are companies um, like ACOM that works on the facilities, um, and uh, Aerojet Rocketdyne, which has been it's changed its name a few times. Um, they do uh, Charles Stark Draper Labs, um, Leonardo Finn Mechanica, an Italian company that now changed. I haven't updated it yet. Sorry, changed its name to Leonardo. Um, and it's the third name change in three years. Why? Because they're on the blacklists. It's working. So they keep changing their name and hoping that, you know, they'll be able to get away with stuff, but they won't. So this is, so this is, um, this is some of the, the information. So this is like the list of companies, uh, some background. And this is, um, let's see if we can see this. This shows, oh, this is terrible. Um, this is a terrible uh, way to look at it. Uh, this shows who the um, the total investment in these in these companies. It's just a it's just a bad it's just a bad way to look at it. Here, that's better. Yeah, that's good. That's great. So you know, so you can see, and this is in USD millions. How much is being invested in these? Is you know that we've found. 
um, in our research period. Invested by who? That's the question. It's invested by a financial institution. So banks, pension funds, asset managers. We do not list individual investments. So we don't put people's names up there. Um, because if I, you know, if I, for example, had one share in, um, oh, let's say Airbus, it's a Dutch company. If I had one share there because I wanted to do stockholder meetings, yeah. right? I don't want to be up on this list. No, and also one share is, really tiny when you're talking about a company that has millions of shares out there. But these are the, this shows who's, you know, a little bit about who has investments um, in the different companies. And it's in, you know, the big ones. Boeing, a lot of people invest in Boeing. People, so a lot of people don't realize Boeing makes nuclear missiles. Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, no, and then do you show who the companies are? And that's what I'm getting to. So just a second. So we'll go back. So that's, and then of course we've got, you can go down here and you can get like details about general dynamics <coughs> and what do they do, um, for example. And it tells you about the company, tells you their contact info, what they do around nukes, and it lists who actually are the investors. Um, in them. So you can see directly, right? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm sorry if you found that your pension fund is with Mass Mutual. Anyone? Or uh, or TIAA CREF? That's a big one. Right? State Street's our biggest investor. State Street's an asset management firm. And they have uh, more money than I've don't, then I can describe because it's, it's like bizarro. Um, it's not real numbers anymore. Uh, but, and they hold, like they do asset management for banks and other things. But anyway, so that's, that's about the, the producers. Um, and then we go and we look at um, who actually does have investments. And here's where you can find, and if you see something here and you think it would be a lot easier if it was shaped differently, Please tell me, because I'm always looking for help to make this more usable and more fun. Um, and more, well, fun is not the right word, but more, uh, more friendly. So here, um, here's the top, top investors in the world. Oh yeah, State Street got, State Street got, um, State Street got knocked out by BlackRock. But they're all American, <laughs> the top 10. Um, are all American, but the, most of the producing companies that we list are also American. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the times we've found that going after the biggest isn't the best way to go. They don't want to move so as easily. It's like, you got to get a whole bunch of other ones to move with us. But anyway, so this goes into this, and then it, it, we have information about the country, investors per country. Um, and so these are fact sheets that you can print and hand out. Um, it includes information about each of the company, each of the investments. Uh, this is a very long fact sheet. It's 100 and some like report. States. Yeah, this is the U.S. Um, and it's a, it's just a briefing note, and it just shows exactly, oops, exactly who has what um, what investments uh, because it's a lot of. Uh, it's, it's a lot. And, it's, and so you can see, like, what is it that they invest in, particularly? I'll, I'll, get a, I'll go to one. Sorry, this is here. So affiliated manager, managers group. This is what, they, what their holdings are. And a lot of banks don't want to give you this information. They say it's, you know, confidential. Um, and yet it is, act we've, we pay a chunk of money to subscribe to databases to make this information public. Uh, if you want to give us money, we're always happy. Yeah. I mean, just for, like, I'm so dumb about this, but let's say we're, we're going to go to... Uh, Affiliated manager. Yeah, yeah, and they, in the United States, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do we do? We call we call the company? And do, they, do they have a chapter? Uh, can you, like, sort of so play act saying, how you yeah. do it? So let's, um, let's look at that, for example. You can go, and we have a, we have a little thing on here. Um, well, let's just well, say, just for yeah. a second, there's two modes of action here. Yeah, exactly. One is the action of individuals, yeah. right? Susie is, talk, you know, is laying out what an individual can do. I will talk about activities that are not, not activities of individuals, but of a municipality, of an organization, of a church, of a college, yeah. where you ask that. You, you don't do it. 
Yes. They tell their fidelity manager to. And it comes back to what is the strategic target? What are you trying to, who do you need to move, right? And what's your best way to do that? And Nadine talked about this a little bit earlier um, in the last session. She talked about looking at the, um, looking at the tactic that you use to get to achieve your strategic goal. Um, and so this is, we have a, a section called Take Action, where you can just tweet at them and do some public naming and shaming, um, which is super handy. It gives you some background information about why, um, why to get involved with this, why to focus on governments or financial institutions, how to engage the public, some stuff about engaging the media, because media loves these stories. They love it. The Financial Times does not talk about nuclear weapons. The Financial Times does talk about amalgamated banks saying we're not investing in weapons. The Financial Times Bloomberg does talk about how you can have a carbon-free portfolio and not lose money. All right, so there's, it's important to look at this. And then we have lessons and examples because that, it's always helpful to know what do other people do, what worked, what didn't work. Um, and so this is where um, this is where you can go through and you look at, you know, what is it that you want and it gives you kind of a good step-by-step -step process. You know, you talk to other people, right? We work together. Uh, we go, we try to set up a meeting with the bank. We bring the information from the report to the meeting. And it doesn't matter who you meet with at the bank, it's going to go up the chain. We always say, go as high as you can. Always reach as high as you can. Because you, if you ask for a meeting with the bank president, you might actually find out they live next door to you. <laughs> you never know. Seriously, you never know. It's worth asking. Yeah. I'm just looking. We have like maybe 30 people here. Could we come out of this workshop with one bank that we're all going to do in every, wherever we are? And so we're like, you know, we, we'll, be the, we'll be the guinea pigs. We'll try it, you know. And, talk to each other, like come out with a program, not just learning about something, but the commitment. I mean, maybe pick something like TIA CREF that everybody knows, or, yeah. or what, what would you suggest? Because you didn't I like TIA CREF, they've been very resistant to me, but I don't have fun with them. I'm not a client. I'm with client Wells Fargo, people. and I'd love to do something uh, about them. Wells Fargo, they're like this sort of, nobody likes Wells Fargo. Right, yeah. Let's do Wells Fargo, okay? So mm -hmm. let's like have a plan, and then let's say, how would we do that? You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I'm tired of learning about it. It's our job later to make a piece. Well, you know, to hear what Susie is doing. Depending on the speakers, your analysis, your data, what, what's available, or what's your strategy? No, from somebody who don't know anything. Okay. Um, well, here, look. Uh, I'm, I'm listing here some things that I've, I've found to be really helpful. First thing you know, everybody sign the sign-in sheet. Yeah. That's really important. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you do that. Then, you know, looking at, at and these can be interchangeable, right? You pick a target, you get a couple of friends that you want to work with. Let's do it now. You know, a couple of peeps. Pick a target. Um, get the information, and then figure out what's your best tactic, okay? It's going to be different for different people, and I think that's really important. People have different levels of comfort with this type of information. People have different ways and skills that they bring to our common work. And the most important thing is to remember everybody can do something. So think about in your group, in your peeps, you know, who's who likes to do stuff on social media, who likes and what's what's gonna be who's gonna who's got a branch locally? Uh, who's gonna go a couple people maybe go to a branch, a couple people maybe send some letters to the to the head of the um, like we always target the head of communications, their public relations because they freak out the most. Um, much more than the corporate social responsibility people who are just like, yeah, 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 more protest. Yeah, as soon as communications hears about it, they're like, <laughs> fix this. And they send it over to corporate social responsibility. And then in the process, you know, get the info. So you go, you have information, you can always get in touch with me, and I'll be happy to make sure to give you the latest if I haven't updated the site for whatever reason, because I have stuff. Um, 
And every time you go in, just be true to who you are and what you're doing. Your honesty and earnestness comes through, and it's what makes us get to success. And I think that's really important. Um, and that's something that we keep asking for. Don't look for easy compromises because, oh, if this fund, this TAA CREF has a social choice fund that's, you know, got a good, that doesn't invest in weapons, that's not an out. That's not the principal position. Um, so those are a couple things, and it's all this information, again, sorry, it's because I'm in, I'm in, I was logged in in editing mode, but all this information is on the, is on the website. I want you to use it, and we're constantly looking for new ways and ideas to put things out that are really helpful. So somebody at a workshop I was at last month said, can you make a specific brochure just about the producers, like that we can have a fold up and hand out? And they're like, oh, that's smart, so my, I'm working on one. You know, that's that type of thing. Think about what you need. We'll do our best to help out. You said get in touch with you. How do we do that? Oh, yeah. I'll put somebody in here. Let me put this up. Uh, Susie? Yeah. I think, you know, if you're an educator or starting a campus, it's really good to have a things that we've that we've got and that's that's a bit again looking at stuff very individual and maybe Jonathan it's good to talk about things a little bit on the, the collective and then we'll come back and bring it all together is that okay yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I see a question I'm sorry yeah let me one just take the, a question one of the, what I'd like to suggest is one of the things that people you really can do as a first step is if you have 401ks mm -hmm. yeah. is find out where the money's going to invest and what the companies are that are in that portfolio I know that a lot of people don't do that, and they're surprised to find out that their, their 401ks are being invested through a fund that participates in one of these companies as an investment vehicle. So, um, I said this too. Oh, yeah, I, I have some, a basic question. When you say investing in a company, mm -hmm. Bank of America, does that mean they hold stock and bonds? In that company, a bank actually holds stocks and bonds, okay. as opposed to TIA and CREF. Which also holds stock. Right. So here's the thing, and that's a, that's a very good question. Um, the way we, we define investment is um, they give loans, they give corporate loans, um, they, do, um, they hold stock, they hold bonds, they provide uh, corporate financial services. So they're, they're the guarantee for a new stock offering or the guarantee for a new bond offering. Um, and they provide, yeah, those are the, the four main things. So, so when we talk banks, about investment. When you list banks, you're talking about banks that actually loan money. They, they make loans or they hold stocks or bonds. It's, good, it's a good question. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Here, yeah. What's your experience with these um, Stock Exchange um, Commission and the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act? <laughs> Very good question. Um, we haven't worked very closely with the Stock Exchange Commissions, to be honest. Um, some of our allies, some of our colleagues in uh, some of the academia are looking to work with that. They're also looking to work with index trackers and index creators. Um, but we haven't done that at this time. So I don't have an experience on it. What is the reference to that, that in your language? Sorry? Did you, try and you say they haven't worked with that. What is the that? Oh, that? Um, with the with the, um, the the exchange commissions, <coughs> so the, the like the Securities Exchange Commission is the, the, the official government, the, official, government, the government side of things, or or LIBOR index, or you know stuff like that. We we haven't gone there. We we do take our rather indirect route. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'll take that. Let me take these two more questions and then turn it to to John. Is that okay? No. Okay. Have you had any experience in? Um, picketing manufacturers of these uh, weapon systems. Like, for example, Lockheed Martin happens to have their national or international headquarters in Bethesda, mm -hmm. uh, very close by. Uh, I haven't seen any demonstrations there. Oh, yeah, is, that an, is that an effective uh, vehicle for uh, public education? 
I think it. I think it's. I think it varies on the, depending on the community that it's in. I know I was at um, demonstrations at Bechtel when I was younger. Um, that got me interested in their relationship with this. Why? Why are they connected? Why is this demonstration here? Um, our through this project, our focus is to change the producer behavior through finan direct financial pressure. So that's that's the strategy. That's the tactic that we've chosen. Um, to do to do this type of work, uh, so it's I think that those type of demonstrations have happened. They they definitely elevate the attention, yeah. and that yeah. helps yeah. helps everything. So that's my uh, that's my two cents. Okay, I got two. Yeah, yeah I think um, my uh, take on that is that it's probably uh, more strategic to actually pick at your banks because I think we are all somehow involved with these banks. Uh, some way or another, and I think there, if you stand in front of the bank, lots of people come to the uh, to the bank, and you you can uh, distribute flyers and get more people, get a base of people who will also be informed about that their funds are uh, supporting nuclear weapons, and I think that's a very effective uh, way of educating the customers of the bank. That's what we did in Montgomery County. We, we often went to markets or so to distribute information and get petitions and so on, and, uh, and just informing the public. Right. I think that's a very important step. All right, so let me, um, I said that there are two approaches. There's actually three. You, I'm going to come back to yours afterwards, the individual 401 case. Um, so in the United States, let's say in Massachusetts, there are cities and towns in Massachusetts. All cities have municipal workers, right? And they have pension funds. Uh, and the pension funds are invested in these funds, Fidelity and, you know, and all, all these names, and they're buying Lockheed Martin, stock, et cetera. Uh, ta uh, now, it's different in different states, and sometimes the pension fund, the the teachers will be in a pension fund that's a statewide pension fund, uh, but usually there are local muni there are municipal ones. That's why we chose Cambridge. Cambridge is a city. It's not a town or a village it's own pension fund. Uh, cities and towns always have a city council, right, or a board of selectmen or something like that. There's a body who has some kind of legal oversight over, over the pension fund. It's complicated because there's multiple controls of over, over pension funds. So in the Cambridge case, uh, we went to a couple of, we went to the mayor and the city councilor. Um, and we had already worked with our nuclear storm, which is on the board of mass consaction, so it wasn't that, wasn't that, that, that difficult the way it been. But with a resolution calling on the pension fund to divest. The U.S. Conference of Mayors has um, a general form of, 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 of that. Uh, and we will get that out to you. So you can pull the language from the U.S. Conference of Mayors resolution, which is signed by 20 or 30 mayors in some general, gen general language. What does it say? It says that the pen, that the uh, you know the city you know won't doesn't support investing in nuclear weapons, and therefore to take action will will, will, will support divestment. Has other stuff about nuclear abolition, but it has that language. Uh, we'll also send you the Cambridge uh, re re resolution. Um, now, you have to think of very second of the politics of this. If you are a retired sanitation man, right, in Cambridge, this pension fund is very important, right? And you're not going to be interested in people who, for their own ideological reasons, right, want to mess around with your pension. Right. So uh, my advice is don't immediately go to the city council. Find some retired friend who, who's, who votes, who has a vote on the pension. Often there's a body, there's an elected group that oversees the pension fund. In Cambridge, they're elected by the retirees and not by the general population. And you have to do a little internal ed education that, um, you know, there's a lot of ways of making money in the stock market, and preparing to blow up the world is not uh, the way to do it. It's not, it's not that hard to, to, you know, to, 
to calm that thing. And then talk about the fact that if we weren't making nuclear weapons, we could solve the housing problem, the transit problem, et cetera. Or we could have Social Security or, or, or Medicare. Or can I throw one more yeah. thing in there? Or we could have a steady return on our investment that is not volatile. Not right. You make more money investing in candy right. or condoms right. than you do in companies that maintain yes. nuclear weapons. Right. Right. Candy kills too. Right. Okay, yes. But condoms save lives. So you have a number, you have a number of political allies that some of you may be already in touch with about yeah. because the climate people right, are trying to do these fossil fuel investment things. Right. So they're in tune, they've already decided this is a great idea. And then there's the, the South African history. Many people of our age remember South Africa. And of course there was also an effort that was quite successful to stigmatize the tobacco industry. It wasn't quite a divestment campaign, but it was similar. So this is an effort to, to bring up that there is industries, you know, they're making their money on the fear of nuclear destruction, and it's not, 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 not a good thing. Now, we're really at the beginning of this campaign. So uh, Alice has the right idea. We should constitute this body as the Interim National Organizing Committee for the U.S. Don't Bank on the Bottom campaign. Montgomery County, I think, is the second most, there's a number of people thinking about this, but most other places, people have just just begun to hear about it. Just begun. It's much more advanced in, in, in Europe. It's not advanced in the U.S. So I know you'll all agree to be on our interim <laughs> co coordinating committee. And some of you will come up with some, you know, very good ideas of how to do this. Now, you don't have to limit it to municipalities because colleges and universities have often, uh, you know, are tied into to pension funds or they have endowments. Not too many public colleges, but private colleges. Uh, have, have endowments. Private college endowments aren't that big. Not that much of it is going to be in Lockheed Martin, right? And uh, uh, again, in terms of getting publicity, you know, writing a letter, a letter to the editor, uh, these things are covered because it's something new. And editors realize they know there was a blackout, right? No, hardly any U.S. papers covered. That, that event in the UN, right? Because it's international. And they, they knew the US is not going to get rid of the nuclear weapons. But they do know that a municipality could vote to divest from Lockheed Martin, and Hamilton College could, 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 could vote that's to have its. Uh, right. And so you get some news coverage that you won't get when you tell them you're sending a delegation to your senator because they know that means nothing, right? But this kind of action is, is something new, and we've seen it with South Africa, we've seen it with the fossil fuel divestment. It got news. I know at MIT when the students called for fossil fuel divestment. Now we have David Koch sitting on our executive committee. Oh, but they, they, you know, they went bananas, right? You know, there was like an explosion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right, right. And so that you know went very far. Oh, fossil fuels. We're invested in fossil fuels, right? These are very, very so I think it's, it's a very exciting opportunity. Now churches, turns out many of the churches already have very strong um, investments. So uh, we have a very active church group. It's led by a Methodist minister. And when we first went to him on this issue, he went into a study. He pulled out this book of the resolutions passed by the General Assembly. And it turned out they were already divested from corporations and manufacturing weapons. But not all denominations are, right? So if you're a church, you know it's worth looking into. Now let me just switch back to what you asked. Individuals have 401k. I have a 401k. Uh, it's um, fidelity is the thing. They send me a list of all the, you know, the, okay. you know, it just, that part of my brain never <laughs> but our colleagues at the Future of Life Institute, now this is a group that started with computer scientists, and they're all high-tech people and research people, 
astrophysicists and right, mathematicians right. and, you and know, their focus smart. is some cool. individual discovering that his or her 401k holds stock in Lockheed Martin, mm -hmm. calling up their investment advice for them and saying, I want you to sell. I want you to get rid of that. Well, turns out that most of the, often you won't know whether or not you're invested, that both your 401k is invested in Lockheed Martin. So Future of Life Institute, I thought it was up on the website. It's not yet up. but. Oh, it is a so you're tool. Mutual, tool. Mutual okay. fund stuff. So they've uh, developed uh, tools to check. So you, you put in the fund that you own, and it says whether or not it's invested in these nuclear weapons countries. Now, many of, in, in a, there's a whole arena of the stock market, socially responsible investing. So this concept of people moving their money away from, let's say, fossil fuels or away from, you know, some nasty thing into social responsibility. That already exists, right? And so that gives an individual the prospect of when their fund manager says, oh, well, well no, we, we couldn't do that. You can say, back, well, don't you have a socially responsible fund? Uh, and if they don't, you have to move your investment. But so that arena is available for, for individuals. Um, and some people are very excited about that. People like me who That's don't believe in individual yeah. action, I, I, I would never, I, I mean, I'm in the meetings about doing that and they harass me. No, I'd, I'd rather spend time talking to you about how we can expand the Go Bank on the Bob right. campaign than me personally do that. <laughs> but I have many friends. The last thing they can do is go to a meeting. The last thing they believe in is group and social action and collective. Yeah, they believe in their individual activity and they will they will do that. And the FLI guys are right. There's a whole population out there in the US that believe in individual action is the way to go and they'll do it. Yes? I still have a question. In our case <coughs> in Montgomery County, it, uh, we were helped by the fact that the um, investment in oil is going down the drain and they will be at one point stranded assets. So that really helped us to make a case, also a strong case for uh, divesting for financial reasons. But I don't see how, uh, I mean, people will ask. Uh, no, we ran it, no, yeah. so the Cambridge, the Cambridge, the pension fund is not divested because the state oversight board said you have to use financial criteria, this wasn't the financial criteria. So we're temporarily stopped. However, there's a precedent because Massachusetts pension funds can divest from tobacco stocks. And when that campaign was run, which is about 20 years ago, the state led a progressive group in the state legislature got put through a waiver that in, in this case for tobacco, Right, this criteria, it, uh, the strictly financial criteria is waived. So we have a legislative um, precedent. Now that requires us developing a statewide campaign, right? And that takes some time, right? So we have to meet with people in other communities and, and, and win them over to, to, and find some state legislatures, which we have actually, to, to bring okay. this into the state legislature. Paul. Uh, so are you saying, John, that the Cambridge pension fund is part of the state pension fund? No, but they're subject to law, to state law about local, about okay, So each state. town actually does have a separate uh, Each city has a separate so. stock. Yeah, yeah, yes. Cambridge has a separate fund. But the state law says you can't waive. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, the state law you says the, cry, the local group has to use fit fiduciary, you know, there's some language yeah. about fiscal responsibility. And so let's say we make the business case for this, because in the UN, massive people are signing on to abandon the abandon these things. Money. And so, I mean, I don't think they have to wait till they lose everything to, to <laughs> make the, the case for that. That's a good case. That's a good fiscal case. Yes. 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 This isn't all that hard to do, actually. No. Um, uh, we found that just getting on the telephone uh, to a person to say they uh, 
that you're getting power from. Um, just getting on the telephone, and not on the email, but where you're actually talking to a human being, and you say, I don't want any investment of my money in, say, this or that. And um, we had that, we were getting, for instance, here in Washington, we were getting power that was supplied in part by oil, in part by cutting down forests, and in part by various other things that we didn't approve of. And I simply got on the telephone, and I talked to a human being for maybe a half a minute, and ever since then, the bill has, when it comes out, tells us what the sources are, and not on one of those sources that we oppose has ever been on that bill since. It's, it's easy to do. And um, we've, we've done this uh, with um, accounts we have, uh, uh, with uh, a couple of places that get your pensions and handle whatever stocks you own and things of that kind. And again, uh, they stopped investing That's in these things. You, 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 you talk yes. to an individual. I just have a comment. I don't think it's easy to get on the telephone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big consumer advocate, and it's not easy to get somebody on the telephone anymore. Well, I don't know why why it should be. Maybe it's because of recording. Yeah, push this, push that. Push that. It is very hard. But, but it's still it's good tactic. Good tactic. But you don't have to get it. You know, you can write to them on the telephone. But. I wonder in terms of argument, I know when we're talking now about this divestment from weapons in general uh, or stopping weapons sales to uh, repressive regimes, we get the pushback of saying, well, then the Chinese will and the Russians will and the rogue states will, and how do you respond to that? Well, let me say, um, well, first place, I think there's going to be pushback on these campaigns. Your campaign, because it's brought up, the F-35, uh, contracts are in every congressional district in the United States. And that's not and an accident. And they're politically organized, yeah. right? Yeah. So, for example, uh, we decided to focus on nuclear weapons. It was ta tactical because a lot of conventional weapons manufacture in Massachusetts. Raytheon is in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Raytheon, if you go to a city council and say, don't make, don't buy weapons, Raytheon activates its thousands of white collar and they dwarf your letters. They activate their electricians who go to the state AFL-CIO and block the resolution that your teachers brought to the AFL-CIO. Nuclear weapons don't employ that many people. They kill a lot, right? and it's localized, right? New Mexico, I wouldn't run, try to run, well if you run this in New Mexico, we have a very different char character. Yeah. New Mexico, South Carolina, the state of Washington, but there are very few people employed building nuclear weapons, and, and they're, 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 they're localized. Um, I think your general campaign is very exciting. It's, it's absolutely key. It's going to work in some places. It's not going to work in other places. Who, who raised the question about uh, 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 the manu arms manufacturers? So. You know, in some communities, that guarantees that you will be seen as an enemy of the community. You're taking money out of the pockets of, of hardworking people who need to put their kids in college and pay for the Alzheimer's care. Now, I never go to those things. I go to the housing demonstrations where people are complaining there's not enough housing, right? And I talk about why isn't there enough money for housing or the transit. Like the On the other hand, in terms of publicity, you know, it is true that you get a bunch of people out, out, outside saying, you know, these people are killing us. You get some publicity. But if your strategy involve, involves building alliances in the community, I think you have to be very careful. You have to make sure that that community, there's, there's other sources of income or else there's another group that's doing without. And you go to them and say, why, why isn't the money coming here? So that's, you know, depends on the community and you have to be very realistic. And you have to let go of the fact that war is terrible. 
man, if you're in the hospital and you can't pay your bills, that's just like being wounded out in, in the field, right? It's just as bad. It's not true that, well, it is true that war is worse than anything else, but most people don't know that. They haven't been on the battlefield. Right. It's a it's a straight up um, the straight up question of you know principle number one of good organizing go to where people are right um, I want to if it's okay with everybody I think that um, based on what we've heard I've put some stuff on this board because I like to do that and I tried to draw a picture of an old school phone and then I realized that's lame nobody has a phone like that so I tried to, I drew a picture of you know the phones that we have um, but um. But there's, there's a couple of things that I heard here that I think are really good. I just want to quickly throw them back. Um, and they're things that, looking at where um, it's potential, where you can make potential changes. University endowments, churches, because a lot of them already have this stuff on the books. But they probably forgot. Right. It's good to remind. Um, local government. I really think, and I found out, and this was so exciting, Tacoma Park, Maryland, in their nuclear weapon free zone has, like they have, a, they have a committee because of it, because of the zone. And somebody from that committee called me up a couple of years ago. I was like, we're, you know, we're a producer, thinking it was like a movie producer, not like a company making stuff. But the, because of this, because they're going back and because they're a nuclear weapon free zone, using that as a hook. Saying that means our pension fund can't be invested. That means we can't use SunTrust Bank because SunTrust Bank has investments. It violates our nuclear weapon free zone. So this, so local government is really important. The U.S. Conference of Mayors nuclear weapon free zone legislation, and then remembering you always got to check who oversees stuff, and is it a committee? Because I think that's really cool. If it's a committee that oversees the pension fund. I still think the fact that the New Jersey, what is the New Jersey Firefighters Pension Fund is involved, is invested directly in nuclear weapon producers is messed up. Firefighters should not profit off of bombs. Firefighters should profit off of calendars. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sorry, you know, I, I'm, I, I joke a lot and I, I throw a lot of things in that, you know, maybe are not always appropriate. So I apologize if I offend anybody, but um, <laughs> it's, you know, but still, firefighters shouldn't make money off of bombs, especially because they're the ones who are going to have to go in if they get used. That's right. So, so yeah. Yeah. the unions, the unions are a key there. I mean, Exactly. I've seen unions this last year just come on all these issues. So, yeah, as far as the targeted, exactly. this is the government itself, but the unions that are working for anybody. Unions? I'm a big believer in unions. Well, yeah, they do, but there's a, a lot that don't. And back to you're convincing them that this will help you. You need housing. You need jobs. We need to di diversify. Yeah. The unions are big, and I'm seeing that in California right now. And that's something else. Like it's going to be a little things like this are a little bit different depending on where you are. And that's why having this group together is really key. And we need to keep talking, um, sharing information, not just with one another because it's inspiring, hey, we did something great, what about you guys? But also telling financial institutions why people are leaving them. If you do your own 401k, tell them why. Because, you know, then they start to fix the problem. And it's, you hit them in the wallet. Um, let me check, I want to keep on time. Oh, so you, um, time is going you I don't think we have, have the time to get, you know, we really need a little subcommittee to, to pursue Alice's notion of choosing a single thing. But maybe you could, when you go back, look over the U.S. list yep. and what you know and make a couple of suggestions about what might, if we wanted to have a, a central tar target. I mean, if I knew the people in San Diego were going to go after Wells Fargo, then I'd be motivated why to get a couple of people. Why don't we just say we will go after Wells Fargo? Just to try it. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you oppose that idea. 
Um, okay, so I have um, Mary, I saw your hand first, and then Diane after Mary, and then Vivian, and then Medea. Oh, Medea, I'm sorry. I don't have my, I usually have my list. Let's see who's good. Um, yes. The last tax day, uh, there was we, we, uh, we mentioned this, we had the, the investment, uh, our move of money, and we had 300 people show up uh, and, uh, down in our Peace Park. And uh, we also had the uh, Catholic uh, Peace Ministries show a big dollar bill. They had, uh, you know, they had the Miss America, the, all the other sort of characters. They had this big, Dollar bill that they take around the, the state. They come to your. They come to your state, um, and they have all the the the. They stick on the monies, Fresh. and and yes, and how much it's costing, and how much your dollar bill gets, and it got on the front page of the paper. So, awesome. you know, and and divestment was one of them. Moving the money was one of them. You know that that made a big. It was, it was shocking to see 300 people. We've never got that many. We have 25 usually. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. really awesome. Congratulations. Where, where was yeah. this? This is in Des Moines, Iowa. In Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. Right. 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 First caucus state. Right. So, <laughs> not the fly over state. I was born. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> It's also nice, um, around the U.S. Tax Day is also right when CIPRI, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, launches their information on global military spending. And there's a global campaign um, against uh, the Global Day of Action on Military Spending. I had to look at it. Um, but there are also good things just to, because nobody's alone in doing this. And it's good to remember that, because it can be lonely. Um, I think it was Diane. Okay. Um, maybe you can also campaign something positive to do. Like I, I, Amalgamated has come up a lot as a clean bank, or maybe you can call something like Money for Life or some catchy name. And first of all, are there other banks that we know about? Yeah. Um, I think Amalgamated is New York City. No, 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 they're here. They're here too. Oh, yeah. Um, they're a labor bank. Yeah. Yeah. Where are they? The, 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 and I know um, Kathleen mentioned it when she was here. Um, so yeah, so uh, so people like to have a positive action that makes them feel good, and then get publicity over meeting into that. And, uh. Cool. I think that's always important to look for the the positives. Um, I lost my I lost track of my list. Is the fellow in the back with the? Um, yeah. Just has there been any thought about uh, having people take? our own personal accounts out of these banks. Yeah, that's what I was describing. Yeah. So that's where, um, in the, here in the US, you have, there's the list of banks that we have. Um, and there's also, if you're talking about mutual funds, because they're housed in banks, that would be, uh, that information is here. I'm not talking about stocks, I'm talking about our savings. Right, so that's, so that's picking the banks. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. that's, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. straight up, Fargo, right? yeah, straight up the best one. And switching, that's the, that's, you know, moving Easy. to. It is easier, and banks will help you to move to other ones. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay, I just moved, I just moved to, a, to a socially responsible bank, and they were just like, oh, here, this is what you need to do to just, we'll handle all the paperwork, including their, they'll deal with the U.S. government on my behalf. They just wanted to get rid of these. No, no, they wanted to welcome me. Oh, but we've since amalgamated now made the statement that's the first bank in the United States, right? Yeah, we know it. We should be talking this up. Like, this is like the beginning, and maybe many of us should tell our bank if you don't do what amalgamated did, we're going to take our money. I mean, that's an individual. Amalgamated bank. I thought it was just another. No, it's around the country. So that's. That's like an immediate thing. They just announced it this week, so <coughs> immediately we should be complimenting them and going to our own personal bank and saying, why don't you do what amalgamated? And, and there's a credit union to which by law are much more community right. than right. banks. Right. So go there. And that's something else, which is that um, I'm legally not allowed to say to move your bank account. Okay. <laughs> um, Why can't you? Because I can't do it because I am a, I'm a resident of a country that does not permit me to give you financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Not your country, but individual. 
No, I'm not. I do not have the qualification to give you official advice to where to put your money. Um, I can give you information about alternatives. Um, we can't put. We can't say move to this one. We're we're not allowed. However, we can connect to others who can say that. So go ask this person here. And it's just it's just a, you know I'm very careful about my legal status. Um, so knowing if you if you are a bank or financial institution, your credit union is on the list, like a good guy list, we can put out a list of good guys. But I need to know. And that comes back to the sharing information. So if you know, please make sure that, that other people know. Um, OK, I've got a handful of hands. Um, so I think it's, um, it's Vivian, then Terry, and then Medea, and then Natural. Natural, yes. And then yes. I have the sign up sheets around there. I think yeah. they are a combination of oh. individual oh. and a collective. Mm -hmm. I think I have participated a lot of petition. There has been designed by somebody who has more information than give you a petition, then you sign and they deliver and protest at the same time. I think that would be very effective. And they also have it, uh, media attention. And I think individually have some harassment. They, and it's just like phone, you know, they can really cut your phone if you are using individual phone. But you have a collective organization, then you can have a separate phone. You cannot be cut off. Uh, at least you can have set up another one. But the problem of all this is uh, you want to have a collective, it's sometimes it's very hard to do it. And they are also individually, you have your own account, you can take action. The problem is this system, before you move your money, they take away all your money. So you can be a millionaire, but pretty soon you'll be homeless. So importantly, if we have a collective effort, can we already have some kind of strength, say, whoever victimized, we are targeted to government officials that ask them to do something about it. But and that's not been something that we've come across when people have made a clear switch. Um, but financial institutions won't take your money because you want to move it out of that financial institution. And I think we've better, we we let's time. stop that rumor no. before it leaves the room um, no. because that's not actually, that's not actually how the system has worked. And it's, they and believe it or not, the there, are, there are protections to make sure it doesn't work that way. You have choice over where your money goes, and that's what gives this campaign. The problem, the system is I'm sorry, Lee, I'm going to, I'm sorry, Lee, I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off, I'm going to move to the next person. See? Yes. Um, I say, Billy, I know what you all said about when you did the, the call to your electric company, just asking the questions has a huge influence and impact. And if you can, if you yourself have purchasing power within your organization or something, or you know somebody who has purchasing power in their organization, and just saying, can you ask these questions and somehow signaling that you would have a preference to make a purchase from a company that divests in these kinds of places, or that kind of thing has a huge impact yes. in in corporations, and I know that from from my personal life <laughs> of knowing what actually works. I mean, I've been like, I feel like a spy. Like, <laughs> oh, you like my, my husband is a VP of sustainability for big corporations, and so um, I kind of have been paying very close attention to the kinds of things that work and, and help move the needle on those because they have massive power in their purchasing power in their dollars and that those are things that really make a difference. Thanks, Terry. I think that's really important. It's what? My name's Jody. Jody! Oh my gosh, I wrote down. I'm sorry, maybe I went out of turn. No, no, I, no, I wrote down okay. tonight because I misheard you at the beginning. I'm sorry. Um, but that's so important, and it's such an easy thing. Well, ask the question, Do does this bank have investments? If they answer, then, you know, check. The power of reporting, too, that, that um, when, the, when they all had to, like, all the companies now do all kind of standardized um, sustainability reporting, and just having, and it's voluntary and everything, but just having to put it down makes them stop to reflect a little bit, like, is this really 
with you know who we want what we want to be able to say to our customers and so forth and so somehow lobbying maybe to get some of these questions into the reporting of social responsibility um, might be an interesting tactic as well because then people we'll can talk compare about project about people that. can compare and make those comparisons when they're making their purchases or who they're going to support and it becomes a brand issue and yeah a competitive advantage in a way um, Medea I, think you've been waiting for I just wanted to go back to clarify more, Jonathan, what you were saying, because, um, you know, strategically, I can see you say we're going to focus on nuclear weapons. Uh, other people have said... Oh, it's just the Massachusetts. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm just going on your logic. Uh, other people have said, well, there are wars that are ongoing now with U.S. weapons used, used now to commit war crimes in places like Yemen and uh, Egypt and whatever. Um, and And... The, some, the many of the big companies are the same companies. Right. So you're not saying to uh, Lockheed Martin, we don't want you to produce nuclear weapons. You're saying take. You're saying to these banks and pension funds, take your money out of Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. So Lockheed Martin is this huge employer with all these. You know, you're gonna. Have, you have the same problems right. in terms of jobs and, right. and push. So let, let me say, um, I think we're very <laughs> excited that you guys are broadening this campaign. And, and we will run with it, right? A absolutely. Um, I, I, I do think it's more difficult because there's going to be more more opposition. But you're absolutely right that the the uh, the divestment thing doesn't say divest only from those divisions that are making the blue weapons. Mm -hmm. No, it's divest from Lockheed Martin, right? And they are with the F-35. So this the don't bank on the bomb campaign, even though the corporations are chosen because they make nuclear weapons. They'll all also make conventional weapons too. So this doesn't doesn't separate. It's like a first first step. But let me say while while we have time, um, uh, this is a great group. Uh, it's too big to operate as a committee as a whole. I would like to uh, autocratically propose a little interim steering committee. Uh, I think we want a chair uh, on that who propose. Let's try to do something together. Susie, I'll be on it. We have a couple of people here who are organizational leaders. We know they have telephones and email and staff, right? Medea, Wolf, and now we've got somebody with uh, a sustainable investment <laughs> and experience. Um, uh, so that would be six, and then you or anybody. Oh, and Paul uh, from AFSC, he, he named his local activity, but he participates in the national. People's budget. Do we want a uh, South African go, go. advisor? That's <laughs> <laughs> not exclusive. I'm just, I'm just naming a group that we will, at least we will confer, we'll get back to you, maybe set up a listserv, set up some mechanism of communication, and we have a proposal with Wells Fargo. Is there anybody that objects, like, just to take that? I think Alice by. could go back to the thing and say, that's, a, we think we're going to work together. And then we Initially can with Wells Fargo, like maybe somebody else, it. maybe that'll change. But. There's a lot of reasons to target Wells Fargo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Standing rock. Um, there were a couple more hands. Can we, yes. can we yes. hear from a couple the, a couple more people who wanted to say something? And then, um, and then we'll get so you and then you. Um, I don't know if you already have this, but if you don't, uh, uh, like a, a symbol, a logo, like a good housekeeping seal, a certified organic seal. That's interesting. That's interesting. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, and then they could put it either on the window of their bank, but since so much is done online, they could put it on their website, certified, you know, weapons free, and, uh, and that's the lure that we're offering. That's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. Awesome. that's a cool idea. Yeah, I, I really like it. Do you have any design capability? Because I don't. <laughs> like I'm fit. But maybe we can talk about that. Back. Okay, let's talk later. Cool. That's a good idea. Thank you. And let's go on the back. Um, yeah, look, I, I think the I think the the good guys list. I think that's super critical, especially because I mean, you're dealing with like bankers who are either you know obviously into following money lists or um, or or uh, or sales, and they're also in a commodity. Like, there ain't no difference between Wells Fargo and and Morgan Chase and all these other ones. So they're in a highly competitive business. So if you get a list and you can get people looking at this list, get a little controversial. Um, do like a couple different factors, and all they do is rate factors all day. 
So if you show them a factor that has like a formula on the side, they'll run through those formulas and like probably push back and be like, yo, this isn't fair, and da 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 And then you could do one for environmental, you could do one for whatever, and then you talk to like the sustainability uh, investment funds, because they're going to be very much, they, they want you to succeed with this, and they want to see that that succeeds, because then, then the money moves over to them. Yep. Um, so that, that, that would be really powerful. And the other thing too, is especially if it was slightly dynamic, mm -hmm. where, oh, well, they did such and such, and then they moved down or whatever, and then another one mm -hmm. moves up. So then now they're in the position where, okay, they know what they have to do to move up in these rankings or whatever, and so that, that, would, be, that would be really super powerful. And the other thing would be, uh, you even run like the side campaigns on it or whatever, and do like kind of the opposition thing, and like go into zero, and be like, oh, who are these? Like, da 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 because like, they're super Republican. And then you'll drive a bunch of traffic to that, and you'll get a lot of people saying stuff on that. And then there's a few other groups from, uh, like uh, Eve Silver's group will definitely uh, will definitely write that all that stuff up. So I think that's I think that's super duper powerful. Cool. Um, Can you be our media person? <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Um. And then did everybody? Oh, sorry. Yes, please. Uh, Twenty years ago, I was asked by the Institute for Peace and Justice if I would put together a panel of CEOs. Mm -hmm who were really in the social responsibility. So I called several banks, I called several corporations in San Diego, and I managed to get a panel together. But they took it upon themselves to kind of puff up uh, their corporation, the bank. This is, no what, this is what we're doing. And uh, I thought, gee, that was really a good gimmick. Mm -hmm. um, and one man even said to me, I have no idea what social responsibility means in my bank, but oh my gosh, I'm going to find out. And then, so I thought that was quite a good technique. I'll tell you, um, if I can share one more thing. We have uh, in the, the Netherlands, we, for, for our anti-nuclear campaign, we ran this big national petition. Right to get something on the to get something discussed in the parliament, um, and there's a way to do it. You know, you need like 45,000 certified signatures, and we're thinking, okay, who are we going to partner up with? Because we can't do it by ourselves. So we partnered with the Dutch Red Cross because it was about international humanitarian law, and that's their job is to defend that among other things. Um, and we partnered with a bank, and this bank is ASN Bank. It's a it's a Dutch bank, and they put on their website, when you go logged into your e-banking, you know, because we all bank by phone and stuff, they had a little logo and, you know, about our, our national campaign and click here and go sign the petition. And we got thousands of signatures um, from this because we worked as a partner. And it was actually really cool and it, it showed me a little bit different. And we followed the example out of Norway where another big Norwegian bank, Storebank, um, does the same thing and they help support campaign efforts. And then we don't take money from them because we don't want to be, you know, look like we're, you know, skewing our research results. But we did take this, this help in getting information out to the public. And when you set up things like that and you provide a platform, that's a great way to give people the opportunity to do good. Because people want to, they want to be good guys for the most part. People don't like to be painted as bad guys, right? They like to be the good guy. So anyway, so I think that's a, I really like that idea that's something maybe in our local community events, we talk about different things, we can talk about, you know, do we get the bank president over here and tell us that you're doing something on the right side of history. It's a cool idea. Um, I think that was everybody uh, who wanted to speak, and I think we're at the end of time, or of our time in this session, not the end of time. <laughs> Um, there's a couple of, you know, it's a couple of important to remember. We have on the website some how to deal with frequently asked questions. Um, I'll add stranded assets because we have a, a little bit about that, but not enough. Uh, we have how to deal with the fiduciary responsibility issue you know, that came up earlier, but also how to push to do good risk assessment and proper due diligence that takes this type of uh, criteria into consideration. And so if you're talking, if you're getting into the financial world, which is neat, um, then these are things that are going to come up. And 
we want to make sure that people have the tools they need to do this work well. Um, and again, thank you so much. Um, I have so many to-do list things on right now uh, from this, and I'm really, I really appreciate it. So thank you. Everybody.